today because I'm gonna be telling you why the EJ series engine is the best engine that Subaru has ever produced. Now, Subaru over the years, Subaru's produced a lot of engines. You've got things like the EJs, and then all the subcategories, EJ20, EJ25, EJ22, whole category of them. Turbos, non-turbos, there's a ton of them. Uh, the EG33s, the EZ30s, EZ36s, the EA triple eights or EA eights or something like that. They were they were the predecessor of the EJ. The EJ was the successor of it. You've got things like the FB20, FB25, FA20, FA24. Super's made a lot of engines throughout the years. Now, the EJ was first introduced in 1989 and it ran until 2021 being put in production vehicles. You can still purchase brand new EJs, obviously with them being manufactured until 2021. But that's a, that's a long time. The EJ's been around for 30, what, 32 years? No, dude, that can't be right. It's gotta be longer than that. I'm 30, I was born in 93, 89, that's 11 plus 21, 33 years? Anyways, the, e the EJs have been around for a long time. When, whenever you tell people EJs are fantastic engines, if they're outside of Subarus, they typically get the tendency to believe that they just randomly, spontaneously combust. They're very unreliable. They are very not fuel efficient. I will agree with that. They're not fuel efficient engines, but they are the best engine that Subaru has produced. Now that is not just saying that from a design and engineering standpoint on Subaru's end, but as a total collective of every Subaru engine that has ever been made. Now because the EJ has been around for so long, that's going to lead us to our first point of availability of parts. Coming from somebody who has worked with engines that are not the most popular and are older, both Subaru and non-Subaru, EJs take the cake for trying to get anything OEM wise for parts. When manufacturers begin to discontinue parts for specific engines, it becomes very difficult as an enthusiast to try to modify that engine, maintain that engine and keep it alive. Since the EJs have just been in existence for that long, Subaru continues to manufacture parts at least for the engines, the power plants of these, not necessarily for the bodies of some of the older cars, but for the actual engines. You can still get things like brand new OEM timing kits, brand new OEM blocks, OEM cylinder heads, a ton of stuff. Now granted, some of that EJ stuff has been more and more difficult to find EJ207s, um, older EJ22 stuff. Some of that stuff that's a little bit more desirable that was in some of the early model cars are a little bit more difficult to find, but for the most part, you can still get them from Japan and import them over to the United States. Because these engines were manufactured in such mass quantities, there are an absolute metric ton of them out there. You can easily get them. And with the with the mass availability of parts, a lot of them are still relatively affordable for the most part. Crankshaft, you can get a brand new EJ crankshaft for $400. You can get cylinder head castings for I wanna say around $630 each, brand new from Subaru. You can get them decked out with valves and all that stuff if you wanted for I think $1,300 per head, which still isn't terrible for a brand new cylinder head when you're putting a brand new engine together if you lost your heads in some catastrophic accident because sometimes that is what happens. I'm not putting the EJ at fault for that. I'm putting other aspects at fault for that, but we'll get into that in a little later. Now, talking about the availability of parts, we're gonna look at the aftermarket side of things. If you've ever modified an EJ, or if you're new to modifying EJs, or if you've ever just looked at modifying an EJ, you will be overwhelmed with the amount of parts that you will find out there, and if you don't have the knowledge, you're not gonna know where to start with modifying them. Now, this isn't gonna be a whole, this isn't even gonna touch on how to modify these engines. We're just looking at the grand scheme of things. There is an absolute massive amount of aftermarket support, and that's because people have been modifying these engines since they first came out in the late 80s, all the way through the 90s, all the way through the 2000s, through the 2010s, and still into the 2020s. We're still modifying these engines. Now, most of the R&D for these engines have been done at this point, and if you want a specific power rating or anything like that, you can easily do it. But the amount of aftermarket support you're gonna find for these is insane compared to, honestly, I'd say any other engine out there, out, even outside of Subaru, with maybe the exception of Honda. I don't know too much about the Honda stuff, but I know at least um, Hondas have, have a massive aftermarket support as well. And the same can be said for, for the EJ stuff and the Subarus. The aftermarket support is insane. Now, I kind of want to move into the tunability aspect of things because this is where the EJs really start to sh outshine the at least the FA series engines. Uh, not a lot of people are... There are, don't get me wrong, there are people out there who are tuning the six cylinder stuff, trust me, coming from one of the Subaru six cylinders myself, there is the tunability side of those, but most of the stuff you're gonna be doing for that is strictly standalone, or maybe uh, like ROM Raider or a piggyback software on a stock ECM, and it's not the greatest, but it does work, don't get me wrong. Um, 
but more comparable with the FA series engines. The FA20 development seems to have died. It's that engine ran from 2015 to 2021, uh, six year span, and the development never really reached past kind of basic bolt-ons. Um, there are aspects to it. If you really want to start dropping a ton of money on those engines, you can, and you can get a MoTeC, you can get these ECUs that will do both port and direct injection. But the direct injection in my aspect, or at least in my opinion, is really what limited the FA series engines. While direct injection is a fantastic thing to have, it creates such a hard barrier of entry for a lot of enthusiasts to go from direct injection over to port injection, or at least even run both of them. Now, when it comes to the EJ series stuff, it's obviously only port injection. It's more traditional for a lot of the, I don't want to say older engines out there, but a lot of newer engines are going over to direct injection. So I guess for the older engines, it's a lot more tuner friendly, it's a lot more enthusiast friendly, and it's a lot easier to make power on that stuff because you're not having to fight the limitations of the direct injection system. Now, I mentioned the FA20 seemed to kind of cease development, and I don't, I don't blame manufacturers for ceasing development on that with the FA24 coming out right after that in 2022 and now it's what 2024 so now they're working on a lot of the fa24 development stuff however i personally don't see i could be wrong and i hope i'm wrong but i personally don't see a ton of fa24 it's either going to go two ways the fa24 is going to continue to be developed or after a couple of years it's going to cease development like the fa20 did and it's just going to kind of die out as a tunability platform um for kind of what you can and what you can't do with them. With Subaru already announcing that they're planning on going full electrification and trying to move away from ICE engines, which we'll see if they actually do that. Um, it leads me to believe that they are gonna kind of halt the FA24 stuff and move over to hybrid setups or full electric setups. We don't know, but that's kind of where I see the FA24 stuff going as well, especially with Subaru starting to discontinue some of their cars and move everything over to SUVs. I mean, we'll see what happens with it, but that's just kind of where I see the FA20 stuff going, at least the FA series engines going, um, compared over to the EJs. Like I said, EJ engines were kind of in Subaru's prime for the tunability aspect of things, especially in like the, the early 2000s. Everyone was trying to, like the STI came over to the States in 2004. That's when we got first STI. A lot of people were doing, Cobb was on top of that stuff. Perrin, you have ETS. You have a lot of companies that work with the EJ series engine stuff and it's for a reason. Now, hand in hand with the tunability aspect is the aspect of power potential. And compared to all of the other Subaru engines, the power potential of the EJ is far more obtainable in easier to do in my opinion than that of the FA series engines. If you want to make 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1000, 1100, 1200, etc. on an EJ, there are recipes out there to do it. You can make literally any horsepower number, any torque number you want with an EJ series engine with just doing a quick Google search. I have a video walking you through how to make all these different power levels on an EJ series engine. I also have it on an FA series engine, but that FA series engine kind of stops a little bit earlier because you run into those limitations of the direct injection system. So the power potential of the EJ compared to a lot of the other Subaru engines out there, completely unmatched. That, that can be said for the 20, the 2.2, the 2.5, all of these different engines. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that the EJ series engine is perfect because obviously it's not. Every engine out there is going to have its problems. All of them are gonna have their little synapses of things that could be improved on. Yes, the oil pan sucks. Yes, the stock oil pumps have a tendency to have the factory hardware back out, causing you to lose oil pressure over time. Yes, they do. They can have Ringland issues, but that can be mitigated uh, with the aftermarket side of things to an extent. So I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that it's a perfect engine, but in the eyes of Subaru engines alone, it is probably the best engine they have manufactured compared to any other engine they've put out there on the tunability enthusiast and power side of things for people like us who like to modify these. It's a misunderstood engine. Like at the end of the day, it's a misunderstood engine, which kind of pushes me into the next aspect of this, which is reliability. Uh, people seem to get Subaru reliability confused quite frequently. Now, the barrier of entry into Subarus has come down quite a bit over the years. You can pick up old 02, 03, 04, 05, 06, 07 WRX is relatively cheap now. Even 08, 08 to 10 WRX is, in my opinion, are probably the cheapest because of the narrow bodies. They're not the most. I'm sorry, narrow body owners. I don't mean to be coming after you with that one, but in the grand scheme of things, the 08 to 10 WRX is from what I see are honestly the cheapest WRXs out there. So the barrier of entry has come down a lot. And people who haven't worked on these cars, they don't know much about them, pick them up for the first time, and then they start doing things that they would do on prior cars that they've had, which are a lot more tolerant to modifications than a Subaru maybe. Subarus, I'll be honest, they're temperamental, they're picky, they're, they're 
very, we'll, we'll just we'll just stick with the word picky. They, they can be quite picky, but on the reliability aspect of things, I've seen factory unopened EJ257s, EJ255s, EJ20s. I've seen some of these engines go up to 300,000 plus miles on stock blocks. I've seen one at 400,000 miles unopened factory engine with just maintenance done. Same with some of these other ones. Now they were all still in their OEM form. They were not modified, they were not tuned, they were not anything like that. So. On the OEM side of things, um, they can be extremely reliable. On the aftermarket side of things, once you start pushing them to make a little bit of power, there are modifications out there that you can do to extend the life of these engines. Main ones that I'm gonna suggest are obviously proper tunes, proper modifications, tune for whatever you modify or modify for what you plan on tuning for. They go hand in hand. If you modify, you tune. That's how it goes. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and say like, FB20s, FB25s, FA20s, FA24s don't have that same reliability aspect. They definitely do, but the point of the video is talking about how EJs are the best engine that Subaru has made. And at the end of the day, they, they are reliable engines when set up properly. FA, we're gonna talk about the FA20 again because I know that's what, FA20 and FA24 are gonna be the ones that people compare biggest over, at least on the enthusiast side of things, for this stuff. The, because of the length of time the EJ has been out, we have massive, absolute massive historical forms, internet archives, videos, all of this stuff going over almost, I guarantee you, if you looked up any Subaru question you had, you'd be able to find it on an old Nazioc form, old I want a STI form, YouTube video, Facebook post, I guarantee you the answer to whatever question you may have is out there. I've seen people try every combo with these engines that you could probably twin charge, twin turbo, single turbo, compound turbos, uh, I've, I've no intercoolers, front mount, front mount and top mount, top mounts. I've seen every setup across all of these forms over the years. And it gets down to the nitty gritty of specs, bearing sizes, bearing details, uh, case information. We've cut open cases in the past to find out more about them. And with the vast amount of knowledge that we have on these engines, it creates such a strong community standing for people to be able to do whatever they want with them. Now, with the FA20 and the FA24, yes, they have been out for FA26 years now, the FA24, at least in the WRX. I'm not gonna be mentioning that engine in the Ascent right now, we're just purely gonna be mentioning it in the WRX. If you wanna mention the Ascent, it's been out a little bit longer, but with, and this could change in the future, but right now as I make this video, I, I have a firm belief that the EJ is still the best engine. And maybe 10, 15 years down the line, the FA24, the FA20 might take that over, who knows? But just based off of how long this engine has been in production, how long it's been out, you can, you can easily get information that you need. The FA20 stuff, you can find a lot of it online. There's gonna be some things that you may try to look up that you won't find an answer to, but the information is out there. It's just not out there as pertinent as the EJ25, EJ20, EJ2.2 stuff, EJ207, all that kind of stuff already is. Now, I, I put swap potential on my list, but I guess that can be said for like any, any Subaru engine out there. They all fit up the same, if we're being honest, six cylinders, two or six cylinders, four cylinders, doesn't matter. They all fit up the same. So the swap potential of, I guess, the overall Subaru engines is great, but whenever it comes to swaps, we always see people do the EJ engines, maybe because of everything that we had mentioned before. So it just makes trying to get into it a little bit easier for most people out there. So it's a misunderstood engine. However, I, I have a firm belief that the, the EJ25 is, is the best engine Subaru has manufactured. You can set it up for any type of, if you're, if you're doing straight up motorsports, you can set up the EJ25 to do any motorsports application that you want at any horsepower rating you want. You can easily get parts for it to be able to build it into the car or into the engine that you want it to be. It'll, it'll take a lot of what you throw at it, don't get me wrong. The biggest failure point of the EJ stuff really comes down to like bad tunes, not modify, or not tuning for the modifications you're doing, literally like abusing the car in a way that it shouldn't be. Like abusing it without taking care of it, I guess is, I, I should say. It's not, it's an aluminum block, keep that in mind. It's not a cast iron block, it's not, it's not, thick sleeved it's it's a aluminum block with fairly thin sleeves it's got a big bore it's got a 99 millimeter bore 99.5 it's big it's a big bore for the 25 very thin i don't want to say very thin but it's got fairly thin cylinder walls so you just have to keep that in mind when you're going through it but for the most part you can set those engines up to do literally whatever you want to them the biggest thing that they'll destroy is probably five speeds and automatic transmissions i have seen some higher horsepower ejs munch through those transmissions no problem but for the most part, I would say that it's honestly Subaru's best engine. It's misunderstood, and I get it. From an outside perspective looking in, a lot of people only see the negative things on those engines, but they're, they're quality units. They're just misunderstood, so 
That's all I got for you guys on this one. I figured we'd give the EJ a little bit of love. I know I am not currently using an EJ in my Subaru anymore, but it doesn't mean that I don't not love the engines or anything like that. So that's all I got for you guys on this one. If you disagree with me, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or you think I missed anything that would justify this being the best engine Subaru has made, feel free to drop down below. If you want to tell me that you hate the color of my shirt, that's cool too, man. That's cool. We all got opinions. We, got, we all got buttholes. Buttholes and opinions. They go hand in hand, right? So with that, that's all I got for you guys on this one. If you liked the video, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that like button, turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, sight, and or whatever color it turns for you. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to be able to put it in one of these corners, no idea which one quite yet. But with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. So peace out, homies.